Okay, so now we're going to be moving into uh, ScreenFlow. We're going to talk about kind of the way that we actually conceptually structure um, all the screens in your game. So by ScreenFlow, I kind of mean understanding what screens or scenes you might call them you will need in order to capture all the information that both you and the player need to complete the game, like even to start the game and progress through it, right? So as some examples, um, the kinds of screens that you're probably going to be coming up with are like a title card or a splash screen, um, a main menu, options, saving and loading, uh, maps, menus, inventory. A lot of you have inventory heavy games, so that's going to be something that's really important for your particular design, especially if one of your pillars is something like crafting. Um, overworld design, level select, pause, objectives, winning and losing, so what happens when you complete the objectives, what happens when you fail them, and uh, kind of most importantly, like the in-game screen uh, and what's sometimes called the heads-up display or the HUD. So this is, in most genres, going to be the main gameplay screen that's shown for the majority of the playtime, um, and this is the one that I really want you to focus on. So this screen contains all the information that the player needs to have immediately visible in order to be successful in the game. Um, and later in the lecture, we'll go over some UI elements that commonly show up in the HUD. So for now, just remember that it's important to consider. So uh, in terms of what you're going to be doing for your assignment, you're, if you're doing the UI uh, design section, the first thing you're going to be creating is a screen flow. So this is a flow chart of every screen in your game and the method the player will use to access it. So if that's going to be a controller button or a keyboard control, um, or a virtual button on screen that they like, you know, navigate to with a mouse and click. If it's a dialog box, uh, I just, I'm playing a lot of Animal Crossing right now and they have done all of their menuing through dialog only or some other method. Um, you have to let me know what that's gonna be. So you'll be probably doing sketches or creating a flowchart. Um, for those of you who've been using like flowchart software already for some of your other diagrams, this is gonna be pretty straightforward, I think, but it's okay if it's just a sketch as well. It just needs to be rectangles and arrows, right? It's not that complicated for this. Um, so look at other games in your genre for inspiration about what screens to include. And do keep in mind that you're creating a prototype, so or at least we're trying to keep in mind that this is like for a prototype for now. So you don't need to go overboard and include like every single screen in this list. Most likely you're going to have a subset of them. So let's look at um, a more detailed example. We're going to look at sort of all of the initial screens in Ori and the Blind Forest. Um, and hopefully that'll give you a good idea of what you're going to need. So, uh, this is what the final screen flow is going to look like for the example that we're going over. But in order to really understand how all of this works, let's look at each individual screen and then we'll put it back together at the end. Okay, so the first screen in most games is either going to be a splash screen, which just shows the logo, usually followed by the title screen as seen here. So this is, it says title screen underneath. Um, some games skip the splash screen. Ori, in Ori, you progress uh, sort of from the title screen by pressing any button. So you can see at the bottom, it says button press. Like I've, I've listed what the action is that you have to do. In Ori, it says press any key. Um, so once you press any key, it's going to ov open an overlay of the main menu. So this says main menu. Um, and in this screen, you now have a couple of options. So we'll focus on the start game flow first. Um, but you can see that from here, you could start game, you could look at your options, you can view cutscenes, and you can exit the game or quit out. <clears throat> so in terms of choosing an option, if you like sort of use the analog uh, stick on your controller and then press, usually A is the confirm button in most cases, and I think it is here as well. So if you press A, uh, it will choose the first option in the list, which is start game, and that's the flow that we're going to go through. So when you press start game, you'll progress to the loading screen where you can choose a save. You can call this the save load screen if you like. Um, in this screen, the designers are using a common convention of displaying button prompts across the bottom of the screen for different actions. So note that these are prompts. They are not like clickable on screen. They're just showing you what buttons you would have to press on your controller. Um, in order to do various actions. So this could be selecting a save, which will open the game, copying a save, deleting a save, or returning to the main menu. 
So note that these prompts are something that you press on the controller, which is different than a virtual on-screen button that you would select and press. So in this case, if you press A, it's going to um, select the empty slot, start a new game. All right. So from here, we progress to the heads up display or the in-game screen. Uh, so this says HUD number one. So Ori actually has a number of variations on the HUD that show different information for different contexts. So in this first context, uh, we're entering a new area. So the area name is displayed at the top center. That's like the most important piece of information that they want you to have at this time. Um, essential information about the status of the character is displayed in the bottom center, including health, which are green orbs, stamina, which are blue orbs, and ability points, which is like the sort of the yellow pie chart in the middle. So this color coding is used throughout the game to help players understand um, the different environmental elements uh, that will help the player in some way. So if you come across a green orb, you know that it's going to give you health. It's either going to restore your health or it's going to increase your, your total health bar, right? Same with blue stuff is generally stamina related. Orange or yellow stuff is usually like XP related and then enemies are other colors. So our second HUD context is for dialogue. So when a dialogue box appears, Ori's status information disappears. Um, so Ori can't move or be hurt during cutscenes, uh, and therefore this information is no longer sort of like needed for this context. So, so that's um, faded out. So this helps the player focus on the information given in the dialogue. Dialogue boxes feature a glowing white orb that appears when the player can go to the next piece of text or finish the conversation. And in the third um, HUD context, we see um, kind of a tutorial. So something about the mechanics or the controls is being taught to the player. So information about what to do is displayed on the top center, which has been established at this point as the place that information about the world is going to go, like important. So our title, our dialogue, and our tutorial all go in the same place, right? Along with specific button prompts. So in this case, it says tap B to access the ability tree, tap B to rekindle the soul link. Note also that when Ori is holding a key item, it's displayed in the top left corner, which unfortunately you can't see under my camera, but um, you can see it in these slides if you have them open. All right, so the next screen is the ability screen. This is accessed when Ori is standing at a save point. Um, and the viewer or the player rather can view abilities that they have and if they have enough points they can learn new abilities. So button prompts have been added back in on the sort of like bottom center um, to help the player perform actions. So you can do a button press to um, select a new ability and learn it if you have enough points. You can like sort of navigate through the abilities and learn what they do or you can cancel out and go back to the main game screen. If you pause the game, that will open the progress or uh, option screen. It's sort of a progress screen, more or less. So this is a new series of, a, of screens that show different kinds of information. So when paused, the player views their progress in the game in the form of movement abilities learned, world events that have occurred, and various statistics about gameplay time and collectibles. So none of this information is essential to know at any given time. It's just nice to have, which is why it isn't on the main HUD, right? It's like tucked away one click in, one pause menu in. And additionally, there are some menu options for returning to the game, viewing and changing options, or quitting to the main menu. Um, also note that most of the information on this screen is informational only. It is not um, interactable. So you can't like hover over these things and learn more. The only things that you can do are resume the game, enter the options, and exit. In fact, the difficulty is not even really an option here. Okay, so if we go then into the options menu, the player can adjust their settings to suit them. So remember, all options are accessibility options. It's good to include these things if you can. From here, the player can also view or change the controls um, or check out later boards. So note that these screens are not meant to be accessed more than a few times throughout like all of the gameplay sessions that they have most likely, which is why it's okay that they're buried a few clicks deep. Finally, we have the controls menu. Uh, which allows you to view the controls for the game. And I'm uncertain whether you can remap controls. You might be able to in this screen. Okay. The other screen that is, or the other sort of set of screens that are important to be able to access from the um, main game is the map. So when the player opens the map, a different set of information is displayed that all is about sort of wayfinding and navigation. So pressing B returns the player to the game. 
Um, there are some other toggles for zooming in and out and for turning the legend on and off so that you can see what all of the different icons mean. Um, but if you zoom in a whole bunch, or sorry, if you zoom out a whole bunch, you're presented with one final screen and that's the overworld map. So this map is visible when the area map is zoomed out to its max amount. This gives the player information about their general location in the world in relation to the other locations that they might want to visit. So note that it uses the same metaphor of a miniature garden that we've seen elsewhere, like our map of Hyrule in uh, Legend of Zelda, right? It's, it's sort of like um, very compressed and stylized um, symbols like a mountain and a large tree and a, you know caves and stuff like that to represent the actual game areas that you go through. And generally, they're kind of color-coded the same as the area as well. So returning to this screen flow diagram, we can now make better sense of what's being communicated. So the flow to get into the game is title screen to main menu to load screen to in-game HUD, right? And then from the in-game screen, the player can access the progress or pause screen, basically, the ability screen or the game map, which zooms out to show the overworld. And then finally, the options and controls can be accessed from both the main menu and the progress screen, which makes sense. Because um, you generally, you, you may need to see those things both like outside the context of the game and in the game. So your screen flow might not be this complex, but at minimum you'll likely have a title screen, a main menu, an in-game HUD, an options menu, and probably some kind of win-lose screen. Um, it depends on your genre of game, like a, a game like Ori obviously doesn't have that. Uh, even there's not even really a game over screen because you just it just like fades you you know back to your last uh, checkpoint basically when you die um but yeah it sort of depends on your situation